Thank you, Deputy Speaker. Australia faces a crossroads when it comes to the escalating climate crisis. We know what this crisis looks like because Australians have already experienced it. Droughts so devastating that our hardened farmers are suiciding, floods so savage and rapid that people became trapped in the dark of night in their houses with only inches of air space below their ceiling between life and death, and a world watching on in stunned horror at the extent and severity of our black summer bushfires. As the UN Secretary General recently stated, and you can't say it any more clearly, the era of global warming has ended. The era of global boiling has arrived. Leaders must lead. No more hesitancy. No more excuses. Today, Ross Giddens in the Sydney Morning Herald uh, wrote an op-ed. In it, he said, I fear the government lacks the ticker to make the tough decisions. So the question for the leaders of this country, for our government, is simply this. Do you have the courage to lead on climate action and the energy transition that is required for a viable future? Not for us. We won't be here, but for our children and future generations. It is not about us. Currently, we have what at very best can be described as modest targets, at very best, and action on climate change. Targets and policy that only address only address domestic and scope one emissions, hardly anything. And I would add, it increasingly appears that the Labor government is pushing forward with the expansion of gas exportation on a massive scale. Beetaloo, Scarborough, Browse, Barossa, Liverpool Plains. And I believe they are doing so in a way that is not open or transparent with the Australian people. It is devastating. Last week in the media, I called the government's proposed sea dumping bill a colossal attempt at greenwashing. But let's drill down on this a little bit further, this, this claim of colossal greenwashing. We have seen $1.5 billion of investment going to the Middle Arm Hub. The Middle Arm Hub will, in practice, amongst other things, act as a massive methane gas export hub. However, the government continues, as it has right from the start, to describe it as a renewable energy hub. This is greenwashing on a colossal scale. Just be open and honest, please. Then just last week, the Environment Minister brought a bill to the House that will allow the import and export of carbon dioxide for carbon capture and storage, the sea dumping bill. This bill will enable the injection and sequestration of CO2 under the seabed. This is despite the experience of Norway and in Australia with the Gorgon gas mine that shows this is failed technology and unreliable. This sea dumping bill was portrayed as a move to protect our marine environment. In reality, what this bill will do is enable and give the green light to further carbon capture and storage projects, which will in turn allow the government to approve new, new massive gas export projects into the future. Again, greenwashing on a colossal scale. The Australian people deserve a whole lot better. And already huge swathes of our ocean floors have been opened up by the Minister for Resources for exploration for carbon and capture and storage suitability. All the pieces of the chessboard are being slowly, methodically and surreptitiously moved into place, and the aim appears to be the expansion of gas exportation. Additionally today, the report from the Clean Air Task Force on methane was released. It revealed that Australia is lagging far behind many other countries in measuring, managing and reporting on methane leaks and intentional venting that occurs in the gas industry across the country and still over $11 billion in ongoing subsidies to the fossil fuel industry. But Australians are not dumb. They see through the greenwashing. This week, 80 doctors and health professionals and parents from the Northern Territory and around the country came to Parliament to express their distress at the progress of the Middle Arm Hub and the Beetaloo Basin. The question they ask is, why isn't the government listening to science like they said they would do? And yesterday I was honoured to meet a delegation from the Tiwi Islands. They described to me the lack of respect and culturally inappropriate consultation still being done by Santos with their elders and the community regarding the Barossa gas mine. 
They also express their fear that the need for fossil fuel companies to consult with their, our First Nations people on future projects will be watered down to favour large fossil fuel companies. The question they asked was, if this government is serious about a voice for our First Nations people, how could the Time requirement for companies to consult with—